most of the standards in cancer therapy comes from the United States, especially for breast cancer. When you see and hear stories about people in other countries that have different healthcare systems that aren't able to get treatment they need or have to wait for a long period of time to get treatment or aren't able to get drugs that are necessary for their health and their recovery from whatever illness they're suffering from, that's concerning. And I would be very, very concerned that something like that could happen with uh, the healthcare system changing in the United States. I'm concerned about government stepping in and telling me and telling my family what we can do for treatment, who we can see for treatment, um, what access we have. I'd like to see them fix the things that aren't working before they revamp the system um, where most Americans are happy. I don't believe that there's another country that offers a better healthcare system than what we have. And I th was fortunate to be here. And coming up, so is Joe Wilson Wright. We're going to examine if a health care overhaul will really allow illegal immigrants to flood our health care system. And in one state, the government option has already come and gone. That state's disaster story coming up straight ahead. And welcome back to this special edition of Hand. South Carolina Congressman Joe Wilson interrupted the president's joint session of Congress with his now famous outburst, You Lie. He was addressing the president's statement that illegal immigrants would not be covered by his plan. So who is right? We did a little investigating. The reforms, the reforms I'm proposing would not apply to those who are here illegally. You lie. It was the outburst heard around the world. South Carolina Congressman Joe Wilson calling out the president during a speech to Congress for denying that his health care plan would cover illegal immigrants. But once Wilson apologized for this comment, the spotlight moved from the man asking the question, well, to the question itself. Does this new health care plan apply to those who are in the U.S. illegally? The health legislation does allow or at least opens the door to allowing illegal aliens to receive taxpayer-funded health care. Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley is the ranking Republican on the Senate Finance Committee, the same committee that, despite Grassley's vote to the contrary, recently voted in favor of the Baucus bill. Both sides say they do not want illegal immigrants to get health care, but the issue comes from lack of enforcement. Although technically, both the Senate and House versions of the bill contain language barring illegal immigrants from receiving federal subsidies to purchase health care coverage, Grassley argues that this language means nothing without additional laws to enforce it. It doesn't go far enough to guarantee that some illegal aliens will not end up getting the subsidy to buy health insurance, which is taxpayer support for health care. You have to have verification in order to make sure that illegal aliens are screened out. Senator Grassley insists the only way to make certain illegal immigrants are not getting benefits under this program is to verify citizenship by photo identification. You can check with Social Security. That number might go with a name that's presented, but you need a photo ID to know that the person that has that number is the person who says that they are. To this end, Senator Grassley proposed an amendment to the bill that would have required photo ID verification, but the motion was defeated by Democrats on a party line vote in committee. How silly can you be for something like getting into a federal program where you're using federal dollars? Why do you have any question about using a photo ID? Why then would Democrats vote against such a measure? They know that it's politically sensitive. They don't want to upset the advocacy groups for illegal aliens by nailing down that absolutely nobody can get help through this bill that's here illegally. In addition, some Democrats argue that not only should an illegal immigrant be allowed to pay for coverage out of his or her own pocket, but also if doing so, he or she would be allowed to participate in a government-funded marketplace exchange. People who have no respect for American law come here illegally. Uh, they shouldn't be here in the first place. So how do you get to the point of justifying, well, if they pay for it themselves, they ought to be able to have it because that's like saying it's okay to come to our country illegally uh, and you can benefit from the same programs that are people that came here uh, legally. 
So what's to stop illegal immigrants from breaking the law to slip through loopholes that Democrats have left wide open to get health care coverage they want paid for by your hard-earned tax dollars? Nothing. That's, that's the main point. If you don't confirm someone is eligible for the program based on their immigration or citizenship status, you're saying, yes, come on, enroll. In the meantime, this nightmare appears to be inching closer and closer to becoming a reality. Now that the Baucus bill just made it past the Senate Finance Committee, what's next? I think it's going to be made worse by being uh, merged with the bail out of the Senate Health Committee, uh, and I think it's going to have a public option in it, uh, and uh, that's going to lead us to the federal government running our health care system uh, from here to eternity. Now, Blue Dog Democrats have been a thorn in the side of left-wingers who have tried to jam reform through Congress. But what is it exactly that they oppose in this health care bill? Now, most Democrats in Congress, well, they don't want to talk to me. But Congressman Jason Altmaier, well, he was kind enough to let me ask him a few questions. All right, so here you are, a bit of an anomaly. You're a Democrat, and uh, you've been pretty outspoken about the differing bills that have been going through the House of Representatives, where you are, and also in the Senate. Tell us, what, why... Why are you opposing what is being proposed? I voted against the bill that came through the committee on which I serve, primarily because of the impact it had on small businesses. I thought it was punitive. If you're a small business owner that doesn't offer health care to your employees, it's not because you're a bad person. It's because you can't afford it. And to have an 8% payroll tax on top of that doesn't make any sense. I think we should use a carrot and not a stick and help small businesses find a way to offer health care for their employees, not penalize those who don't. Most importantly, cost containment. This has to be about bringing down the cost of health care for families, for businesses, and certainly for every level of government. We're on an unsustainable growth path, and the bill I had to vote on in the House did not do anything about that. And the tax increase, I thought, was misguided and misplaced as part of a health care debate. The bill I had to vote on had an income tax increase, primarily for the wealthy. I don't think this is the place to have that discussion. This is a health care reform bill. What do you make of the fact that, that Nancy Pelosi is saying that it must have the government option? And by the way, the Baucus bill in the Senate does not have the government op uh, option. How do the Democrats reconcile this? Because they're taking you know, pretty, pretty strong positions on both sides. I think the House bill will probably have the public option. The votes are likely there. The Senate, I think, is likely to not have the public option. So we're going to go into conference and we'll see what happens. But for me, the public option, if it's in there, has to be airtight. Cannot have a public subsidy, a taxpayer subsidy. Can't have anybody that's forced into it. Has to be totally voluntary. It would have to meet all the same regulatory requirements that the private insurers have to meet. And these are the things I think that if there is a public option, in the House bill or the final bill that it would have to meet. Has there been any pressure brought to bear on you by the leadership in the House uh, because of your uh, position? Well, I think, like everybody, they would like to have your vote, but I will say that I feel like my voice has been heard. I voted against the bill in committee. I've had discussions about why. I described it in the same way I just described it to you. I think the bill's a little bit better now than it was over the summer when I had to vote for it. I don't know that it's in the place where it needs to be for me to support it, but I do feel like my voice has been heard. Well, Congressman, there's a, uh, another congressman from Oregon. Uh, his name escapes me at this moment, but he's got a discharge petition that he's circulating, and I don't think your name is on it yet, and that would guarantee the American people 72 hours to read this bill before there is a vote that takes place in the House. Will you support that discharge petition? We have been guaranteed or promised by the leadership that there will be a 72-hour window between the time that the last I is dotted and T is crossed and the time the bill is brought to the floor. One of the many reasons I voted against the cap-and-trade bill in the summer was specifically because of this issue. You had an amendment that was put in 300 pages in the middle of the night. We had to vote on it only a few hours later. That's not the way business right. should be done. Let so I, I, th I think that there is going to be a waiting period. All right, last question. If Anthony Weiner and Nancy Pelosi are going to insist on the government option, and then you have the blue dog Democrats that are going to say mm -hmm. they can't support it with the government option, the, the, really, the infighting is within the Democratic ranks because I think the Republicans have pretty much been pushed to the side. And do you think they'll be able to find a way to reconcile that considering I think the Blue Dogs, if they vote for this, they're walking the plank. I think their careers are in jeopardy and Nancy Pelosi doesn't have that problem. What happens 